voter apathy overshadows Morocco's elections. A record low turnout and few changes on the horizon. Is the country moving towards a new era or just repeating past experiences? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Hashim Ahel Barra and welcome to this special edition of Inside Story from Morocco's capital, Rabat. Parliamentary elections were meant to mark a new era in the so-called democratic process, but they've taken everyone by surprise. Not only they have made huge surprises, but they have seen the lowest turnout ever. A clear indication, many say, the political process is failing. This is the party that made major gains during the parliamentary elections. The king is likely to appoint a prime minister from the Istiqlal party. We focused our entire program on one main factor, which is jobs. Our country has made significant progress. The unemployment rate has reached 9.6%. Yet we still face a major challenge to lower this rate further. But it was the results of the Party of Justice and Development that were the biggest surprise. Opinion polls predicted they would easily form the biggest bloc, but could only manage to come in second. Their leader, Saadeddin Uthmani, bitterly lashed out at his rivals, saying they used money to buy votes. The Moroccan elections witnessed a new phenomenon, the retreat of government interference and its neutrality, but an increase in using money by the candidates supported by their parties. But the biggest losers in these elections were the socialists who came fifth. After 10 years in the government, voters were not impressed with their record. None of their major candidates managed to secure a seat. The country's voting system makes it unlikely for any party to have a majority in the parliament. An alliance of the big winners remains the only option. But in Morocco, coalitions often result in a government that lacks a clear vision and the strength to implement its program. International observers praise the election as professional and transparent, but the political elite is already grappling with a record low turnout that is likely to haunt the next government throughout its mandate. Joining us to discuss the major moments of the elections, its aftermath, the future of Morocco and the hopes of Moroccans, our guests, Dr. Lahsan Haddad, a strategic studies expert, and Mr. Rida Lamrini, a political writer. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for joining us. Let me start by asking you, Mr. Haddad, is the lowest turnout ever in the history of Morocco a sign there is a problem with the political process in the country? I think it is. I think there is a problem with the political process. I think that the policies that have been led so far have not delivered uh, in, on the expectations of a lot of the citizens. But I think also that it is a signal for the political parties. I think it should not be read as mostly a failure. I think it is, it is a response and it is a political response that should be read as such. And it is a signal for the politicians that they need to do something. Uh, the way I read this is like the policies have been on macroeconomic level and macro structural mm -hmm. level been okay and going the right way, but I don't think they have trickled down to really change the lives of the citizens. That's why they have not really responded. And I think that it, there was also fear from the citizens that there is not going to be like a huge change from one government to another. And, and, and the fact that a lot of the political programs between different parties are similar and are the same made a lot of citizens apathetic to the political Let process. Let me ask Rida, Rida, you follow the elections with us in Al Jazeera International. At the same time, you monitor the event. Were you surprised that Moroccans were not very much excited about the event? No, I was not surprised. As a matter of fact, I was even expecting this, this, uh, this result. And, uh, we were few to uh, predict that that result because uh, uh, let's remember before the election there was many actions many advertising many uh, 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 trying to mobilize the people to to vote but uh, as uh, lahsen has said this is uh, this is a result of uh, of many things but for me we should not take this as a catastrophe uh, and first of all this is the first time in the history of Morocco that we have a figure that we can trust. And that's, I said uh, on your channel, 
that 2007 is the year zero for democracy in Morocco. Another uh, observation, this low turnout does, doesn't mean that people are not interested in politics. For me, it is a, a huge signal, a strong signal that uh, Moroccans are interested in politics, but not in the kind of politics that have been implemented so far. Dr. Lassan, do you buy into that, the fact that this is the first time in the history of Morocco that the results were not magnified by the Ministry of Interior, blamed in the past for engineering uh, false and rigged uh, elections. For the first time, we know as a fact and as a truth that this is the, re the only truth about these elections. Only 37% of people decided to vote. I think that this is the first time that the, the administration did not, re, did not intervene actively, actually, in rigging the elections or changing them in the ballots themselves or trying to engineer the elections in a way. But I think also we should remember that there are other factors that are outside the control of the administration that have also played into this. The use of money, for example, the use of other kinds of ways to pressure electors to vote one way or another. And I think that's something that probably difficult for the administration. But this is something that sends uh, mixed signals to the international community, to those who follow the events in Morocco for the first time. Rida, you've been in a polling station in the south of Morocco. How come that on one hand the authorities are neutral and impartial with the regards of the elections? On the other hand, people were talking about cases of vote buying as if the um, role of the state was sort of negative as a, opposed to what it should be. They should tell people enough is enough and be careful. We'll take those who bring the votes to jail. Um, for me, uh, the fact that the administration has been neutral and uh, there is a wording that's used it's uh, uh, a committed neutrality I mean it neutral doesn't mean that the administration is not taking the appropriate measures when it's uh, needed but uh, the use of of money and uh, the pressuring the uh, the electors at the last minute or even during the voting day this is the kind of uh, things for for which you need proofs and i think uh, the every candidate every party has uh, has been to the has used all the measures that are available to them whether it is to resort to the uh, authorities or to the justice let's talk about the biggest surprises of these elections first of all the socialists who governed Morocco for 10 years, dominated the political life for more than five decades, were voted out. Was this a result of the record during 10 years? I think so. I think this is a sanctioned vote for the socialists. I think the socialists promised a lot during the first two governments, 98, 2002. I don't think they delivered. That's the first thing. The second one, I think a lot of the failures of this government, especially in education, especially in justice, and also in, in, in finance, are, are due to, to the socialists. And also the fact that they are the leaders. They have been the leaders of both governments, but, one way or another. But Reda, you have voter sanctioning a partner in the co coalition, but at the same time enabling the other partner, the Istiqlal party or independence party, to become Morocco's biggest political party. Doesn't seem a little bit strange? It is. Uh, to me, it is strange. Uh, as, as much as I understand the sanction that has been uh, imposed on the, on, on the socialists, uh, I don't understand why, at the same time, their allies for those 10 years are uh, voted uh, even strongly. So this is a contradiction, uh, and I don't know what will come out from, this, from, these, uh, from these elections, because on one hand, we had uh, parties that have all are responsible for this, for the policies of the 10 years. It is, it is going to be very interesting to see the, the reshaping of those alliances. Okay, I have a question for you guys in two minutes. I've covered elections in Morocco 10 years ago. There was one constant trend, which, is the, which was the impressive uh, uh, emerging and rise of the Islamic Party of Justice and Development. But contrary to all surveys, expectations, they didn't fare very well in these elections. Was it a surprise for you, Dr. Lahsan? It was not a surprise for me because I, I knew that the role of the Islamists or the power of Islamists was exaggerated, especially by international media, but also by some national media. I think 
if there was apps, I mean, there was like voter, uh, I mean, like people did not vote for the Islamists, all of them voted actually. So the Islamists got what they wanted in terms of voting. All the people who should vote, Islamists voted. And I think that the, the Justice and, and, uh, and Development Party is a normal party in this sense. It's not like a huge party that is going to really overshadow. So you all think of it's been country. magnified by surveys? I think surveys. it's been magnified out, out of proportions by international. Do media. you share the same assessment, Ruida? Uh, I don't have to share it or not. The facts are here. The uh, the uh, uh, PGD uh, is now today is just what it is—a normal party. But but the leader said nobody was competing against us. We were competing against vote buying. Um, they're right. Uh, if, if the PGD has this uh, uh, huge uh, uh, reputation, it's not because they are that strong. It's just because the other parties are weak and they are not doing their job. Now, uh, I would like to make an observation. It is very interesting that amidst all this uh, uh, magnifying, uh, magnifying um, uh, windows that the PGD will absolutely uh, overtake everybody in this election. The authorities has played uh, a transparent role. They took the chance of letting those elections to be transparent. So I think this is something that that is very, very positive. It's a very strong signal from the authorities that no matter what, they want transparent elections. Time now for a short break. When we come back, we will discuss the makeup of the next government and the future of Morocco. Stay with us.